So we're graphing each inequality individually, we're just making sure we're shading both of them. Where the shading overlaps, that's what we're calling our solution set. Although I did make a deal with my next class because they always come in late. I said, five minutes late, you bring me coffee. Ten minutes, coffee and a donut. Fifteen minutes, uh, a new car. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would have been smart and said, like, I should get a new car and bring, like, a Hot Wheel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's take a few more minutes to try to wrap this up. Hopefully, you finish the first one and work on the second one. We're going to start on the first one just a bit. We're going to start on the first one up here. So first one we're looking at first inequality, then second inequality. We do them independently, just look for the crossover. So first inequality says we're going to temporarily set that thing equal instead of the inequality that we have. So we'll have x minus y equals 4 just for a moment, just so we can find our graph. We cover up everything but the x to find the x-intercept. In this case, we're done. That's great. Cover up everything but the y, including the sign, to find the y-intercept. So if negative y equals 4, we know that y equals negative 4. Now we've got our x and our y-intercepts. x-intercept says we're going over to positive x. And 4. y equals negative 4 says we're going down on the y-axis to negative 4. Put a point there. We'll graph our line. Of course, we're going to make it dotted because there's not an equals part up here. So we've got our dashed line. We're good to go. And we're going to shade this. In this case, we can check the point 0, 0. That's great. Zero, 0, says we're going to have 0 minus 0 is greater than 4. That 0 is greater than 4. Clearly, 0 is not bigger than 4. So we're going to put a false. We checked 0, 0. It was not true. It was false. So this half plane is not acceptable. The bottom half plane, that's what we're going to be shading. And you know how many people made at least that far? Good for you. That's fantastic. Okay, next up, number two. Number two, we have the same exact idea. We're just doing this process twice. So we're going to temporarily set it equal. So x plus 3y equals negative 4. Cover up everything but the x to find the x-intercept. So we're going to have x equals negative 4. No problem. Cover up everything but the y to find the y-intercept. We've got 3y equals negative 4. In this case, though, if 3y equals negative 4, we still have to divide. So we're going to divide everything by 3.
we get x equals negative 4, no problem, y equals negative 4 thirds. Is it okay to have that fraction? As long as you know how to graph a fraction on a, on a number line, that's fine. So x equals negative 4 says we're going over here to negative 4. Negative 4 thirds is negative 1 and a third. So we're going to go negative 1 on the y-axis and then a little bit more. A third of the way in between negative 1 and negative 2. So that's right about there. You don't have to be exact, exact, but don't just put on negative 1, don't just put on negative 2, be between there at some point, okay? And we're going to graph that line. Now we're also going to make that one dashed because again, we don't have that equals. And we can still check the point zero, zero. So zero, zero, we have zero plus three times zero is less than negative four or zero is less than negative four. Is zero less than negative four? Is that true or false? False. Yeah, definitely false. <coughs> So again, we checked 0, 0. It was false, signifying that this half plane is wrong, this half plane is right. Sheet all that stuff, and then right here, that's our solution set where we cross over. Would you raise your hand you made it that far? You got that. Good for you. You're going to have a problem very much like one of these that I'm giving you on the test. <clears throat> Okay, let's do our last one. We're just going to probably talk about that one, unless we have a little extra time, then I'll do it for you. Make sure you see at least one example like that. So let's look at it. inequality number one and inequality number two. For inequality number one, you're going to see that when you set this thing equal, equal temporarily, we're going to have y equals six. Well, that's a constant. And we should know right now that graphing a constant, that's going to be a horizontal line at y equals six. So when we come down here for our graph, This says your crossing, your y-intercept is at 6. There's no x-term. If there's no x-term, you don't have an x-intercept. That means the only thing you can draw is a horizontal line. So we'll do that. We're going to keep it solid in this case. The reason why we're keeping it solid is because what well, we have that equals right there. So it says it's not dashed like the previous ones. We keep that solid. And we're still going to check a point. Or you can look at this like a number line. In either case, if you check the point 0, 0, you're going to get 0 is less than 6. That's a true statement. So we should be shading the bottom half of that half plane. If you look at it like a number line, it's saying, it's saying you're shading to the bottom of or to the left of 6. That also says you're shading this part of your graph. Either way, you're shading this. All that stuff. I like those constant ones. Don't you like those constant ones? Yeah. Kind of nice. Not a whole lot of work. As long as you remember they're horizontal line, right? As long as you remember that. Okay, number two. Real similar to some of the other ones we've done before. We, we do have the cover up method that will work here because we have that constant off to the side. So we do the temporarily equal. Temporarily equal to 10. Cover up method again is going to work because we don't have a zero here. Remember, if you do have a zero, or or you don't have uh, you don't have that constant term, you have to use a slope intercept form. We've done a few of those examples. Just remember that later on when you get to your homework. So cover up says I'm going to cover up everything but the x to find x. So negative 2x equals 10. If we divide by negative 2. x is negative 5. If we cover up the x, we get negative 5y equals 10. Divide by negative 5, hey, we get y equals negative 2. So already we have our x and our y intercepts. Now you have you're still following me on this stuff. I'm going kind of quickly through this because we've done this several times right now. I just wanted to give you some practice on that. So y is negative 2. That's down here at negative 2. x is negative 5. That's over here to the left of the x or the y axis, negative 5. We're going to graph our line. In this case, we have to make that dashed. 
you see why we have to make a dash? Okay. But we can also check zero, 0, that's nice. So checking 0, 0, we're going to get negative 2 times 0 minus 5 times 0 is greater than 10, or 0 is greater than 10. True or false? Definitely false. So here's 0, 0. Why don't you tell me now, if that's false, am I going to shade the top half plane or the bottom half plane? So I'm shading all of this stuff. Wait a minute, that's weird. Do you see any crossover? Mm -hmm. This is why you have to be kind of generous with your shading. I made this mistake on this, this graph. My lines aren't long enough, and my shading is not big enough. See what I'm talking about? I need at least some intersection so you can see where the shading is and where the shading isn't. These lines actually continue on to the left and to the, to both of them to the left here, where they cross. And the shading is all of this stuff down here. So we, we would have a crossover if you continue this. The sign would continue, the sign would continue up, and our shading would be everything below that, that part. So if you, if you have your paper right now, continue those lines until they actually intersect. Raise your hand if you're able to get that. Get this, this sort of graph. Were you able to follow that down, see that it's correct and everything? Okay, good. Do the cover up method, negative 5 for x, negative 2 for a y. Definitely going like that. Shading below it. Shading below the y equals 6. It's just you gotta, you gotta draw your, be generous with your shading. Make sure you see, and generous with the lines, make sure you see where the crossover is. Okay, the last one I'm gonna give you up here, I just wanted you to see this because I want you to know there's options on how to graph things. Okay, when you look at this problem, do you see that it's already in slope intercept form for you? It's already in there. If you are going to do this problem and temporarily set each of these equal, we'd have y equals negative x plus 2. And we would have y equals 2x plus 5. Hey, folks, will the cover-up method work these two? Does it have a constant? Yeah. Will the cover-up method work for these two? Yeah. Not the way it is, but yes, it will eventually. Okay, so if you said no, yeah, you're right. Right now it won't. Okay, right now it won't. But eventually it would. So if you wanted the cover-up method to work, if you like that method, here's what you could do. If you like the cover-up method, what could you do to this problem? Add x. Just add x and you're going to get x plus y equals 2. You use your cover-up method, you get your intercepts, okay? So you could do that. Add x, add x, you get x plus y equals 2. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Cover up the y, x is 2. Cover up the x, y is 2. You have your, your intercepts, you can graph that. You with me, folks? Mm -hmm. okay. If you don't like that, if, if you like this, check it out. Could you still get the same line graphing that? Yeah. What's your y-intercept? Mm -hmm. What's your slope? Mm -hmm. That's down one over one, right? You graph it two ways here. I'm giving you options. I don't care how you graph it, as long as you're able to graph it. This will give you the same line. I'll, I'll prove it to you right now. If you did cover up, x is 2, y is 2. Here's 1, 2, 1, 2. That would be this line going through 